Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the FTSE Show, episode number 67. Hey there, guys. How's it going? I uh, hope you are well. If you checked out episode number 66 last week, you'll know that we tried something a bit different. Uh, I love to experiment. I love to try different things because if you don't experiment, if you don't try lots of different things, you never know, you never get to find out what works, you know. Uh, and people always say to me all the time, you never stick with anything. You're always changing your mind. You're always doing things. But I'm one of these people that will try something new and see what happens. See if it works, if it doesn't work, how I feel about it, how other people feel about it, what the results are. I'll look at analysis. Uh, and then I will make a decision. Do we want to carry on with this or do we want to roll the book back a bit and, and try something different, move in a different direction? Um, in my opinion, the, looking at the results of that show uh, versus the amount of effort that went into putting that show together, I've decided that we're going to roll back and not pursue that line of uh, that avenue of direction and, in, and and go back to what we were doing before. And if you're watching the show and you feel like uh, there's something that we could be doing that would add more value to you, I'd love to hear from you um, because I'm putting out there what I think people would like, um, but that's not always an accurate, you know, an, an accurate, thought, accurate thought process. Uh, and so if you are watching this show and you're thinking it'd be really cool if you did this, uh, I'd love to hear from you. So uh, just drop a line in the comments underneath the video. That would be awesome. So today we're going to take a look. Episode number 67. We're going to take a look at Vodafone PLC. We did look at this company back in season one of the FTSE show. I think it was episode 20, episode 21, something like that. Um, so it's been a while since we've looked at Vodafone. So we're going to dive in now and take a good look. OK, so episode number 67 then Vodafone PLC. Let's dive in. Okay, so the company has three main kind of types of revenue, I suppose. First of all, there's the consumer revenue, which makes up about 65% of total revenue for the company on a yearly basis. And the consumer revenue uh, is made up of their mobile network service, uh, their TV product, their broadband connection product or service, uh, they they have some financial products and some insurance products that makes up 65% of all the revenue into the business. Then 30% of the revenue is made up from what they call their enterprise revenue. Uh, and this is the communication solutions for small to large businesses. Uh, this is globally. They also provide connectivity for smart meters uh, and they have networking connections that they put in for apps in uh, vehicles and sat navs and things like that and they also provide some some solutions for the health industry and five percent of the revenue the remaining five percent is what they class as their other revenue and that essentially comes down to the renting of capacity to virtual network operators so that is where the three main kind of uh, chunks of revenue are coming from into the business so 2017 then, so revenue came in at 47.6 billion. So this is a big company, very big company. Uh, but unfortunately, they did not make a profit that year. They made a loss of 2.4 billion. Back then, share price was sitting at £2.20 a share. Now, Vodafone's strategy in 2017 uh, was purely to get all of Europe, and I say purely as if it's a small task, uh, to get all of Europe benefiting from a one gigabyte per second mobile connectivity speed. That was their their goal, is to achieve that across all of Europe. That's the end goal that they were looking for. And they were looking to try and achieve this by 2022. Uh, and this was a goal that they'd set out in 2017. They were seeing growth in Germany, Spain and Italy, but that year the UK results had been quite poor. Uh, they announced a, uh, announced a merger sorry, with Zigo in the Netherlands, pictured here uh, in a joint venture arrangement between the two companies. Zigo were uh, uh, our company based in the Netherlands. And um, 
the entry to the market by a free service over in India stopped Vodafone's plans to launch an IPO for their Vodafone India business. And instead, what they ended up doing was they teamed up in a, in a joint venture with a company called Idea Cellular to work in conjunction to try and tackle the Indian market, basically. They also did a similar sort of thing with a company called ENEL in Italy to create a company called Open Fiber or a product called Open Fiber. Uh, in Italy at the time, only 3% of broadband subscribers living in Italy were on fiber. So well be behind the likes of the UK. Uh, and 60% of all broadband subscribers in Italy were receiving less than 30 megabytes per second. So again, this ties in in conjunction with this larger strategy to get all of Europe benefiting from a, a much faster internet, essentially. Uh, and uh, there was a lot of talk in the annual reports about Vodafone uh, uh, from Vodafone saying that the, the UK was starting to slip behind uh, and, and whole of Europe was starting to slip behind many other countries. But Germany already ahead of the UK in terms of a lot of connectivity and networks and uh, and the speed of Internet and the speed of connection. Uh, Germany definitely leading the way. Then in 2018, revenue was at 46.5 billion. Profit, though, came in at 5.1 billion. So it was a really good year for Vodafone 2018. Uh, share price stayed pretty much the same, £2.20 a share. Uh, they acquired a company called Liberty Global, uh, or they, they acquired the assets, I should say, of Liberty Global's uh, cable assets in Germany, Czech Republic, Hungary and Romania for a cost of 18.4 billion euros. So quite a huge, significant acquisition. Um, cost efficiencies have improved the profit. So again, this is partly why we saw quite a jump in profit in 2018 because they'd done a lot of work on their cost efficiencies across the business. This was despite revenue falling down to 46.5 billion. Vodafone India suffered a 90%, 19% revenue drop due to what they call intense competition. And this kind of goes back in with the previous slide where they were talking about uh, this free service that had appeared in India. Uh, and so Vodafone India having a bit of trouble trying to compete with this free company uh, and potentially other companies as they explained that over in that country there was an intense competition bear in mind the amount of uh, amount of, of choice there is out there in India uh, mobile customers were down so people using the mobile service fell from 86 million to 84.1 million across Germany Italy UK and Spain so just looking at those four regions uh, mobile customers had dropped quite considerably. You're looking at 2 million customer drops. So that's quite big. Um, all four regions saw a drop. So it wasn't just one country that that was, was part of. All four regions saw uh, a cumulative drop of 2 million customers. Uh, broadband customers, however, remained flat at 17.9 million. Uh, and India's customers went up. So despite revenue falling, the customers from India went up from 209 million to 223 million customers. That may have something to do with the joint venture that they connected in with. Maybe they're counting those customers in now as a result of that, because you would expect a, a leap of essentially 14 million customers to increase revenue, not 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 cause a 19% revenue drop. So I feel that that figure is kind of just filler. It doesn't really mean anything. It's not like they've had 14 million paying customers. I think that's just part of the acquisition from the previous joint venture. But they don't make that clear in the annual report, so you can only speculate, really. In 2019, then, revenue falls even further to 43.6 billion. Uh, true profit falls to 1 billion. Uh, and the and when, when I refer to true profit, what I'm talking about here is that the company will report a profit but a lot of that profit can be made up of uh, sales of assets. And these are not everyday uh, recurring business of Vodafone. You can't sell the asset every single year. Once it's sold, it's sold. It's a one-off. And so I omit that information. I do so on the other side as well. So I have one-off extraneous costs, then I don't include that. I just want to know what the underlying business is doing on a recurring basis. Does the business that Vodafone do, forget the sales of assets uh, and any income coming from that, forget one-off costs that they're never going to have to pay again in future years, What's the actual underlying business doing and is it profitable? Is it making money? That's what I care about. 
Um, so that's what I refer to when I say true profit. And they made a billion in profit in 2019. Share price, however, fallen to £1.50 a share by this point. Um, so mobile customers fell again. So we'd now gone from 2017's 86 million now down to 81.4 million. So we're looking at a drop of 4.6 million customers from 2017 to 2019. So that's not a good sign. It doesn't necessarily mean that Vodafone's in major trouble. It's just it's not it's a step in the wrong direction. We want to see mobile customers increase. Uh, broadband customers were on the rise. But we're talking about mobile customers and mobile customers uh, and, and revenue from mobile services uh, sales. They were the bread and butter of, of Vodafone. They still are uh, a large chunk of the revenue that comes in. And we're seeing a drop off on that from 2017 to 2019. Uh, they also disposed of Vodafone Qatar. Uh, and that also had a, a contributing impact to the profit falling from 5 billion to only 1 billion from 2018 to 2019. Then in 2020, revenue rose slightly back up to 44.9 billion. So from 43.6 up to 44.9. Unfortunately, made another losing year. Uh, of a loss of 1.6 billion share price falls again slightly from one pound 50 to one pound 25 a share uh, they announced that covid19 had had a little impact on the business but not much uh, as demand for telecommunications increased during the lockdown area so a lot of people were using their phones more and they were using uh, they were watching vodafone's tv services more they were using vodafone's broadband more uh, and so it, it wasn't a bad, it, it wasn't a negative impact so much on Vodafone at that time. Uh, Germany's mobile customers rose for the first time in three years from 29.5 million to 30 million. Uh, however, the Italian mobile customers fell uh, now from 23 million down to 19.2 million. So just in Italy alone, they had now lost getting on for 4 million customers in Italy. Uh, a new competitor entered the market in Spain, which had also affected mobile customer numbers. And Spain was now reporting that customers were down from 14.4 million to 13.5. So, again, we're still we're in 2020 now. We've been doing this for three years and we are seeing a consistent trend of mobile customers going down, going in the wrong direction, unfortunately. Then in 2021, revenue uh, falls even further to 43.8 billion. True profits fallen even further down to, well, we had a loss last year. So we've actually gone from having a, a, a 1.6 billion loss to a 0.3 billion profit in 2021. But I mean, when you're making 43.8 billion, but you're only making essentially 300 million in profit is a very very small percentage isn't it of all that revenue all that money coming in you're only keeping that amount uh share price pretty much stays the same around one pound 30 a share uh revenues fall back to 2019's level due to a significant reduction in what they said was roaming charges so because people weren't traveling due to covid19 lockdown they had lost a huge chunk of their revenue from the fact that people weren't moving around and therefore weren't incurring roaming charges and obviously that that hits vodafone then unfortunately and they weren't taking any uh, weren't taking that revenue in over that period of time, uh, Germany revenue climbs, but all other regions see a fall in revenue. Again, they attribute this largely to the lack of roaming charges. So that's 2021. And then in 2022, revenue climbs back up. 2022 is actually a, a, benefit, a, a better year for the company. So revenue climbs up to 45.5 billion. They make another profit of 2.9 billion. So it's a really good year for Vodafone, really, considering where they've been for over the last five, six years. Uh, but share price falls to 85 pence a share. Now, Spain's revenues took a significant hit due to an increase in competitors in the region. So we're seeing a similar thing to what was happening in, in, in India, now happening in Spain, where other competitors are coming into the market in Spain and it's, it's taken away some of the market share of Vodafone. Uh, however, revenue overall grew because of the following 
uh, or, or people returning to traveling again for the first time. So in 2022's year of reporting, this incorporated people getting back on planes again and incurring roaming charges as a result and therefore increasing the revenue for Vodafone. So essentially that was a big, big plus point for them is people getting back to traveling around the world uh, and using their connectivity devices through Vodafone and therefore having to pay additional charges. So up to 2023, what do we know now? Well, it's not great reading, if I'm honest. Um, so they've already announced this is in 2023 so far or uh, from October 2022 to current January, 20, January 2023. Um, they've announced poor results in Germany, which has led to a profit warning, suggesting earnings are probably going to be lower in 2023 than they were compared to. 2022. We all know what that means. When you do a, a profit warning, it means share price is going to fall. And this is why we've seen the share price in Vodafone fall now to 85 pence a share. So um, yeah, they uh, that, that was not well received by the market. Uh, the CEO also uh, announced their intention to step down. Sevian, I believe it's pronounced, but I might be wrong. C-E-V-I-A-N. Sevian Capital uh, were a, a relatively significant shareholder in the company. Uh, they, they owned a, a relatively decent sized stake in Vodafone and they slashed their stake. And this happened in uh, November 2022. They've slashed their stake in the stock, stating that they have given up hope of Vodafone turning things around. This is off the back of them saying that they've received, they've seen poor results in Germany that are going to lead to a profit warning, suggesting earnings are going to be lower. Uh, Sevian Capital were just like, we're, we're done with Vodafone. We're going to slash our stake in this company because we just don't see them turning things around. And a lot of the promises that we've been hearing over the last five years from Vodafone about expansion into uh, expanding Germany further and further and bigger and bigger, we're not seeing the results from Germany as you we've been seeing on these slides from 2017 to 2019 German figures were falling mobile customers were falling and we've now got another year where the, the poor results in Germany so we don't know what those poor results are yet we haven't had any specific data on that but it doesn't sound good and then with Sevian Capital slashing their stake and the CEO is now left it's all a bit up in the air and a bit of a mess. Um, they've announced a sale of Vodafone Hungary for uh, 1.8 billion euros. They're selling off a chunk of the business there. Uh, and the head of Vodafone Spain has decided to step down. Vodafone have just in this month uh, of January 2023 announced the loss of hundreds of jobs in the UK following an attempt to reduce costs in the business so uh, hundreds of job losses in the UK looking like they're coming forward so that hasn't happened yet they've just announced that this is I think what's actually happened is there have been a number of meetings with key staff at Vodafone this has been addressed to the staff and this has then leaked to the press because I can't see anywhere where Vodafone have actually made a press release on this news uh, this looks like it's come out from staff saying basically Vodafone are going to be axing hundreds of jobs as part of this big shake up to try and reduce costs in the business. Uh, and that's come from the staff, apparently. So uh, they have announced a small joint venture with French firm Altice uh, to deploy fiber services to seven million German homes. But bear in mind the amount uh, of customers that they already have. It's, 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 I mean, it's not nothing, but it's just, it's only a really small kind of aspect. It's not going to massively, dramatically change uh, the revenue uh, income for, for Vodafone. So when it comes to actually pricing this share, we're looking at about 90 pence a share at time of recording this for Vodafone, for the Vodafone stock. Now, put there are two aspects to this. Uh, are Vodafone a great investment? And if so, is it priced at a, a, a level that makes sense? Those are the two key important questions that I want to come away from when I complete my analysis. Now, my analysis of Vodafone has to be quick for this show. I've only got 25 minutes to do it. It would normally take me the best part of three days to analyze any company and to really go into detail about what the, the pros and cons are. This is kind of like a summary show, if you will. Uh, but I have looked at Vodafone. Let's put that to one side as to whether or not they're a good investment. Uh, we've gone through a lot of this now. But in terms of share price, I would be paying, forget that they're either a good or a bad investment in terms of the company. 
in terms of price, I would pay £1.20 a share for this stock. And that is based on the earnings power of this company, uh, the number of shares that are in circulation. Uh, this is based on the net asset values, so all their assets or equity, if you will, their assets minus the liabilities gives us your equity. If you divide that across the number of outstanding stocks, it gives you an idea of whether or not the share price makes sense right now relative to the underlying value of the business. Uh, and then when you look at the earnings power of this business and divide that across the number of shares that are outstanding, again, it gives you an idea as to whether or not uh, 90p is a good price. I think 90p is a good price for, for Vodafone and I would pay up to £1.20 per share. You're also getting an 8.3% dividend on this stock. So for Vodafone, I feel like we've got a company here kind of similar to Tesco where they've got really not got very, they're not going to grow much bigger than they are. They've done their growing Vodafone. They're this huge corporate global business, you know, bringing in just shy of 45 to 50 billion a year in revenue. They've not really got very far to grow now and they're struggling to grow any further. And they're coming across all these issues and they're just trying to keep up the level that they're at right now. And so as a result of that, you're never going to see a company like that jump in share price. It's just not going to happen. Uh, could we see them return back to their two pound a share level again one day? Quite probably, quite possibly. Um, I think it will take some time, but all of this information here is going to suggest that that might take a while just to get back to that two pound a share level. Um, but I would pay one pound 20 a share based on just looking at the price and does the price make sense to the underlying value of the business? Yes, it does up to one pound 20 a share. Fine. You're also getting an 8.3% dividend. That's pretty handsome. That's quite generous. Uh, but for me, the underlying business here isn't that strong. And I just don't feel like this isn't a growth stock. This is a dividend stock for me, unfortunately. OK, so with Vodafone, as we can see in 2016, the, the revenue rose to 49.8 billion. That was the highest. That was their peak. And since then, we've been nowhere near it. So uh, in 2017, we saw a drop off to 47.6, then 46.5, then 43.6. Uh, we've been stuck down at about 43, 44 for the last couple of years over COVID. 2022, we've seen this climb back up to 45.5, but we're still a million miles away from that 49.8 billion. Uh, and so, yeah, we, basically, we've seen a company that over the last seven years have been unable to get back to where they were in 2016, uh, which is, a part, I think, a, a big reflection upon... Uh, why the share price has fallen from £2.50 a share down to 85 pence a share, uh, and also why some big investment firms are starting to ditch the stock now because they're kind of getting impatient. Uh, they're, they're, they're not happy to continue waiting for Vodafone to get their act together and to, to get back to, to growth, essentially, which they're struggling to achieve. And, you know, everyone was thinking 2023 might be the year where we're really starting to see a, a, a jump up and, and a move back to that 2016 figure. So on the news that Vodafone is saying they're having trouble and Germany's sales are down and Germany is the key area that they were hoping to really expand and grow into and get results. So when they're saying that Germany's results have actually come back poor for 2023, investors are starting to say, you know what, I'm fed up of waiting. It's time to it's time to go. Um, so some positive news is that the gross margin has been increasing. As we can see from 2016, we're looking at 26 percent, 27, 29 into the 30s, now just shy of 33 percent. So the gross margin is increasing. So what that means is that, OK, so uh, the revenue is falling over the last seven years, but cost of sales has fallen quicker than the revenue, which means that the uh, gross profit, the margin of profit, the slice of that pie that's profit has been slowly getting bigger and bigger, which is great. I've also noticed that expenses are much lower in relation to that revenue. So in 2016, expenses came through at 10.9 billion. In 2022, some seven years later, it's at 9 billion. So not only have we seen it a, a drop, but Bear in mind the revenue has been dropping as well. You would expect that percentage of the revenue in terms of expenses to increase. Actually, what's happened is it got smaller. So the, the they've done a really good job of reducing the expenses relative to the revenue. Despite revenue going down, they've managed to get the expenses or costs of running the business down much quicker than that. Uh, and so we've gone from having 
84% of the revenue being tied up in expenses now only down to 60%, which is fantastic. Uh, a lot of interest and finance costs, which I'm not keen on. Looking at the profit, it's kind of all over the place, really. Some years they're making massive losses. Other years they're making really good profits. Um, the last four years have been uh, okay. We have a, 2020 was a losing year. 2020, 2017 was a losing year. 2016 was a losing year. You know, um, so, but we've had a couple of good years in there as well. And 2022 was a step in the right direction. But uh, it sounds like we're going to see that come back down again next year. So this is not a consistently profitable stock, unfortunately. They have these little spikes here and there, but most of the time it's not good enough, unfortunately. Uh, the other thing I want to look at is debt. Debt levels are way too high. 58.1 billion in long-term debt. Add to that the short-term debts of 11.9 billion. So, I mean, we could actually add those two together and you'd be looking at, what would that be, nearly 70, uh, yeah, 70 billion. Uh, it's already at 58.1 billion. It's too expensive. It's 20 times earnings. So, uh, so yeah, that's way too high for me. That would be the large reason why their finance costs are so high because they're having to pay so much back in interest. And yeah, that's just not a recipe uh, that I like to see. So overall here, I mean, there's a company paying way too much in capital expenditure as well relative to their earnings power. For me, this is just not a healthy company. Uh, this is obviously a great stock and a great company. You know, this is a company making 45.5 billion in revenue. Uh, but for me as an investment, it's priced wonderfully. But the actual company underneath, there's there's better options. If I'm looking for a long term growth stock, Vodafone are not that kind of company. OK, so all things considered, then they slipped in at 10th at minus 58. So the score following on from the previous uh, edition of Vodafone that we did in season one back in like episode 21, I think it was. Uh, they've actually done better. Things have improved. The scores improved slightly. It's still at minus 58, falling into 10th place on the leaderboard. Uh, and that is because we're, pri we're, we're scoring these companies on growth ability, on the ability to grow as a company. Because if you're not growing as a stock, your share price is not going to leap to where we want it to be. You know, we're looking at wanting to buy a company at five pounds and that, that price turned into 50 pounds in 10, 20 years. That's what we're looking for. And so we're not going to find that here with Vodafone. They're not that kind of company. Yes, I can see them going from one pound to two pounds a share again over the next, let's say, three or four years. That could happen if they could get their uh, buck their ideas up with regards to uh, managing to get some some growth back again. You know, because it sounds like 2023 is not going to be a great year. It's going to be a step back again for Vodafone by by the sounds of things. Um, if, but if they can get themselves growing again, then, you know, it's an OK stock. But you're really only investing in this company for dividends. That's all you're really going to get. 8% is not to be balked at. It's not a bad uh, a dividend. It's quite generous. Uh, and, you know, to have a almost guaranteed 8% a year coming in, that's why people are buying Vodafone stock. They're not buying it because they want the share price to leap from one pound to twenty pounds a share. That's not going to happen with this stock. They've done their growing, and that's you know they they'll grow a little bit, but not enough. They're not going to have they don't have enough profit to reinvest into anything meaningful. Unlike a small company that are maybe you know making twenty five percent of all their revenues profit, and that because of the size of that business, that twenty five percent gives them so much to do where they can then expand that company, whereas Vodafone making, you know, 5% a year if they make a profit, uh, they, they're just too big now to do anything bigger, basically. It's going to take a huge effort to get any bigger than where they are right now. And as a result of that, that share price is unlikely to grow anything substantial. So so there we are. Hope you have found this useful. I hope you're enjoying the show. If you've got any information about Vodafone that I have not picked up on, please leave a comment underneath the video. Let me know. Uh, let other viewers know. Those, those comments are very welcome. Some people on this show 
Some people who watch this show know a lot about Vodafone. Uh, and they've done a way more analysis on this than I have. Uh, I've only really skimmed the surface for this particular show because I know they're not a stock that I personally want to invest in. So I'm not going to invest that time. Other people have. And so if you are one of those people and you've got something to share about this company, leave a comment underneath the video. That would be much welcomed. And uh, I'll catch you in next week's episode. Cheers, guys. Oh, 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 oh,